and welcome to this video which is a follow-on from the previous video where we removed the ABS unit as a whole out of the Mini. Now in this video what I've done is I've separated the three components the pump, the hydraulic unit and the control module so that basically I could test the pump and open this unit up and solder all the connections for the multi-pin connector, which is what I've done. So this video is basically about what's inside this, this part of the ABS pump. So hopefully you'll enjoy that and I'll get this fitted to my car and hopefully it will work. So now with the ABS module basically on the bench, we can take this bracket off using a 10mm socket and we have three short bolts to remove. And there's two and lastly the third bolt. So that's going to make handling the module a little bit easier without it trying to fall over all the time. So there's three main parts to this module. You have the pump, the hydraulic unit and the control module. So we'll just show the pump in as much detail as possible before we open it up. There's just two screws to actually dissect this, which we'll do now. So we can now separate the three main parts. So using a Torx 25 screwdriver, we can just undo these two screws. One is short and one is long. So there's no fear of getting those confused. And then it should be a case of gently moving the control module away from the hydraulic module like so and what we can see here is in the control module we have the eight solenoid control coils and on the hydraulic unit we have eight valves two for each wheel one is an inlet valve and one is an outlet valve and I think the two large valves are reservoir accumulators or they isolate the master cylinder. Not sure which on that. So the motor has just come off quite easily there. And that's got like an eccentric um, end to it with a bearing, which basically pumps backwards and forwards as it rotates. So it's on a spring as well. And it all appears to be in good order. So I'm assuming this is an electrical issue in the control module. Well, we'll have a closer look at all the items. So you can actually see the uh, manufacturing numbers on them. So that's the pump. And here is the hydraulic part of the unit. Clearly showing all those valves. You can see a couple of springs in the larger cylinders, which is why I think they might be accumulators. Because they normally have weak springs to act as a reservoir for holding the brake fluid. And then the control module, and you can clearly see the eight electromagnetic coils that operate those valves. So I'd probably best test the ABS pump motor is actually working. So what I'll do is I'll get a spare battery and this can supply the power to my laser multimeter and we'll also use a relay testing kit there. So what I'm going to do is try and establish which is negative on the ABS unit. 
I could try and look this up on a schematic, but since I'm out in the garage, let's just try and use a meter and find out. So we'll power the meter up. I've got a beep. So these are the relay connectors. So I can just pop one of these in, and that gives me a nice connection to the connector. Put it onto continuity, and we better earth the meter. So I would do that on the battery negative lead. It's working. So let's see what we get. We get an increasing resistance. So that's definitely not connected to the car body. We'll try the next one. I'm going for the four main connectors. And we've got a 4.1k ohm reading on that pin. So let's try the two bottom ones. Okay, so pin 16 and pin 47 are both giving us continuity. So presumably that's our negative. I'll just jot those two down so I don't forget which ones they were. So hopefully now I can use the same meter and find out which of those two probes poking up that go to the pump motor is negative. And it appears to be that one. I'll just check the other connector. In theory I should get a continuity beep again, but I actually don't. So we go back to the other one. So pin 47 seems to be negative. So I'm just going to try and work out exactly which is the connector on the motor. So I've got that in my head now. I'll mark it so I don't forget. So that's negative and that's positive. So again, I can use my little tester tool to actually supply power from the battery to the motor. Let's just check if that motor actually does work. So let's see what we've got. And that's definitely working. Yeah, I think that's pretty okay. So that's not what the problem is. So now to try and remove the panel cover. Well, I'm going to use a hot gun set at 300 degrees. So my theory was if I warmed the outside up, if there was some sort of soft glue holding that in place, hopefully the lid would just come off with no problems at all. So it sort of softened it and I was able to sort of pop some of these plastic almost like probably ultrasonic welding that they've done on it. So I was able to work my way through those but then the plastic is extremely weak on this edge and it still wasn't coming off. So I sort of came to the accepting that I was going to have to actually break this plastic away like so, so I could actually see what was underneath. So it looks like it's joined on the other side as well. So I still was optimistic that maybe I could just warm this up. So I really didn't want to get to the point of using a saw or anything. I really would have liked to have opened this with a hot gun. But that wasn't going to be the case. So I thought I'd clean it up with a chisel. I haven't done any woodwork for a while. And we'll get the Dremel out. And we'll have to just score around the edge as carefully as possible. And that did actually work. So still tidying it up a little bit there. So I think we can take that to the bench now and 
pop it open. It's still stuck there on the right hand side so I'll just twist that. I don't want to just pull and break it. And there is the control module. And we can see two big pins there which is the ones going to the motor. And they do seem to be correct on the internet that the pins are not soldered. So I think the next job will be to get the soldering iron out and start soldering. So now for the soldering part. So I've got the ABS module now and we'll have a go at soldering these connections and see what happens. So what I'll do just before I actually start to solder anything is I'm going to have a good look and see if I can see any dry solders. So we can see the pins there are definitely not soldered. So they are some sort of push fit. So that could be our issue and it does appear to be um, a definite area of suspicion when you research on the internet that those pins are what start to fail after a while. So we can see there the main processing chip. Not sure what that one is. And those are the two pins for the pump. Those could be a couple of MOSFET transistors. Right. So let's start soldering. So I'm actually using, dare I say, lead solder. And I know you probably should have a some sort of fume extraction hood. Um, but I haven't got one of those yet. So we'll just go with getting on with the job. Now I find lead solder flows better and melts a lot easier than the lead free solder. And it's looking like it's flowing quite nicely. It will be good if this actually does resolve the problem with the ABS. Though I believe you've got to take the car over 24 miles an hour once this is all done before the lights may go out. It certainly would be nice to think that they may go out and that this repair has done it. So, that's all done. So hopefully, that's all soldered. It might work. Fingers crossed. So just before I call it a day, I'm going to stick a big magnifying glass in my eyeball and treat it like a monocule and check for any dodgy soldering and it all looks okay. So I'm just going to test now the continuity of the two pins that go to the motor or the pump because they only push fit in. Now I don't really want to solder those because they could be liable to fracture um, with the car if it hits a pothole or something. So I'd rather leave them as they are. And I've got continuity there, so I'm going to say those two connections are probably okay. So really, it's now the job of resealing this. And I'm going to use some RTV sealant. I also will put some screws in. I'm just pointing there to the indentation to show that that's where those two pins are. So they obviously protrude slightly. So now to reseal it all back up. So I'm not going to just rely on RTV to seal this together. I will pop in four self-tapping screws just in the corners. So use the old Dremel there. I'm trying to use screws that are as small as I can get away with. Because there's not much plastic there to actually go into. So 
So that should give us some sort of mechanical bond. And then I'll run around this with some black RTV sealant. Like so. That's probably a bit thick there. Try and get it a little bit thinner. I mean, it's only just to give it a slight seal. We don't really want it all going inside the control unit. So that's got a nice bed there to seal that on. I mean, it is quite well protected in the Mini. So it's not like it's actually exposed to water really. I mean I think on some Renaults they've actually mounted this down by the wheel arch. So it does get a lot of corrosion and that. So anyway we're going to just put that RTV now, try and push it in there, make sure it's definitely sealing it and then what I'll also do is go round in that dip there and I'll fill that with RTV as well and try and smooth it off like so. Now that should be pretty well sealed. So it's now really just a case of putting it back on the car I think once that's dried. So here's some reference photographs. So I believe this chip is where the vehicle data is programmed. So if ever you want to swap a module over and you haven't got the diagnostic software to recode it, I understand that if you swap this chip over onto the other one, it may work. So this is a close-up photograph, clearly showing that EE prom and the two pins. For the pump and here you can see all the pins from the multi-plug connector as you can see they're not soldered and this is the third photo of the close-up of the circuit board and this is the central part of the circuit board and here's a closer view of those many pins of the multi-plug connector and this is a close-up of the two pins going to the pump motor and here's a side view of the ABS module before I opened it up and here's a top view and you can clearly see the letters that have stamped in to identify the different pipes and this photo you can see the pumps being removed and you can just see inside the hydraulic unit at the spindle and here's a close-up view of that and you can see the two pins sticking out for the pump motor. And here's a close-up of the pump motor, clearly showing the identification markings on it. And here you can see the eccentric bearing, and that's made by FAG. And here you can see what looks like a pair of headphones, and that's the two pistons for the hydraulic fluid pump. And another view there looking down onto the spindle. And here's a very close-up shot showing one of the pistons that oscillate backwards and forwards on the motor. And here you can see the eight electromagnets that operate the solenoid valves on the right-hand side module. And the two large cylinders there, I believe, are the reservoir accumulator valves or the master cylinder isolation valves. I'm not sure which. And in this photo, in focus, are the eight solenoid valves, two for each wheel. And this is another close-up view of those solenoid valves. And here you can clearly see the brake pipes leading to those valves. And finally, the back of the control module, showing the eight electromagnetic devices and the long connector block. So you've been watching the opening of an ABS control module for a Mini 1R50. So thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you have a better understanding of your Mini ABS control module. 
This video was filmed by me, Mark Savage, in June 2021, and I can be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.